So I'm just going to turn the music off for a second, just so um, I am going to have to have to actually move over to the other window so I can show off some pictures. Because unfortunately, we weren't really allowed to take any photos no, there, were we? No, it's not you weren't really allowed. You weren't allowed. No. You could take pictures outside, and there was like a viewing platform for part of the, the experience, but you weren't allowed to take cameras or anything with you, so. No. So what I've done here is I have just um, taken a photo of myself in a hotel room. Like yeah. <laughs> I've essentially just assembled all of the photos that I bothered to take all when we were on. All five of them. <laughs> day it wasn't many <laughs> so i do apologize for the distinct lack of any kind of visual context so this is us in our hotel room we stayed at a hotel in greenwich that's me wearing my natla t-shirt there's the statue of amelia you know amelia croft with lara's lara's mum she's looking a bit better than she did in helheim but uh dude dude what the same winehouse oh was it yeah oh shit yeah. and this is the statue that everyone saw a photo of in Candom high street on the pavements they've since relocated it to uh to, to a more safe location but um yeah that's it that's um that is the unified air quotes unified lara right there we can see some close-up photos back of, of her, her butt well defined fake concrete buttocks and she's got a backpack with two pouches in it she's got the braid which everyone's very excited about. And that's a photo of us all together. See me, this Sarah, looking rather confused. Gaged and confused. There's Laurie and there's Jay. Whoever might not have ever seen Jay for the first time, this is this is what he looks like. And this is Rosie, the lovely, lovely, lovely Rosie lady. And there's a close-up of the front. Yep, and she's um, wearing a, a certain familiar necklace. And this is the front of the experience when you go down the stairs. This is kind of what you're greeted by. It's um, it, it's pretty, it's kind of cool. The um, the detailing here was pretty nice to see. It was a bit kind of like, oh, we're here a little bit, wasn't it? There was, it was at this point, I was just grateful to get out of the rain. I, I guess we were a little bit. The front of this looked kind of cool. It was like, oh, the whole thing in the inside is going to look themed throughout the whole Did you take a photo of the holding pen? I did take a photo of the heart. I managed oh, to get away with that, pen. so you'll see that in just a second. And that's the holding pen, as we like to call it. So this is the area that you enter in, but it's just, yeah, look at it. It's a bit, uh, it, it does feel like you're going out on a bit of a school trip, really, aren't you? You're kind of like, you're expected to sit on these tables in groups, you sign a waiver to basically say you're okay if you die on this experience. And I am, <laughs> I am thin enough to go on this. Yes, yes, yes. I was like, hashtag, I'm, I'm fit enough, <laughs> I'm thin enough, I'm not pregnant. Um, if I hurt myself, it's my own fault. So this is basically all I could really take in terms of like insider footage. I wasn't allowed to film like Sarah had said. I wasn't allowed to take any photos. You're not allowed to take any body cams or anything like that at all inside the experience. So you're pretty much going in blind. Yeah. You're not allowed to spoil it. And as you'll probably find out in a minute, there's probably a good reason for that. So here's, they actually had a viewing platform though. And this is the primary assault course area, which you go to. Over here, if I just zoom in slightly and drag, oh, drag it over there. What did you do? What did you do, Google? There's a large kind of looking crash mat surface here. This is where the zip line was. <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll get to that part. We'll sort of go through the entirety of the experience in sequence to sort of talk, th talk you through how it all went. But this is um, part of the assault course. You've got this bit down here where you crawl through under this netting and you've got a bit where you climb over it here, which was pretty cool. Along the way, you find all the relics, which kind of look like repainted crystal maze crystals, but I digress. Uh, a little rope bridge up here and you had uh, like a door into a crawl space at yeah. the very end there. But we'll get to that later. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself Yeah, that's here. all you could see. Yeah. Oh, there's a little bit of a better view of the crash map there. Oh, that I gracefully, yeah. gracefully fell in. We'll just go through the experience now and talk you through what happened from the beginning, um, what all the different areas were kind of like. Obviously, we'll try and be as vague as possible with them. We no. won't give you puzzle solutions or anything like that. Well, yeah, because we didn't solve half of them. Well, no. Um, and we will talk about the end, sort of like a summary of our thoughts of what we think they could do to improve things. So did you want to start things off, seeing as you like t telling everyone about this, this particular part of the... Because uh, I made a funny. She did. I made a funny. So basically, um, Rosie and I just made it our mission just to fuck with all the actors as much as we could the whole way through, because we're not Tomb Raider fans, so we thought we'll just have fun. So we were having the safety talk and this guy was saying, you know, this is the experience, blah, blah, blah. The actors won't touch you, so please don't touch the actors. To which I just went, what if they asked me nicely? Um. <laughs> and the guy was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and to which I followed up with, how about emotionally? And he's like, yes, you may touch them emotionally. <laughs> You're ushered into the first puzzle room and uh, we actually did really well. 
So mm. the whole premise was you had to find the like elemental orbs. So it was earth, air, fire, and water. So the first area was air. And we found three out of four, which I thought was quite good. Yeah, that was actually, like you said, it was the best place that we actually did because the rest of them, we felt like we were a little bit kind of like ushered out as quickly Quick, as possible. do the puzzles and move on to the next thing. The funny thing is though, you're normally ushered through to rush you along because there's a queue. There, there was, was no queue. fucking nobody behind us. So we could have taken our time, but I digress. But um, yeah, that was quite nice and homely. And then a little hatch opened up and a man came through and said, get on the Jeep. We got bad guys to shoot. So this bit, you, it's like a shooty bit where you get crossbows that don't work. <laughs> that cross don't work. These are, these are crossbows that are kind of like you get in toy shops where they got like a little, like a rope or something and they clip and then you put like a little Nerf dart with a suction pad at the front. And the idea is basically you're watching a screen of these Jeeps chasing you and you're in the back of a truck and you have to shoot these bad guys in order to to win, I guess. <laughs> so I think I managed to do like two shots. I think Rosie managed three. It was a bit of a shit show, actually. Did you want to tell him about the person on the intercom? Oh, it was Zip. Yes, so we got our first audible glimpse at the new Zip. And Some, he's like, I think that was like the one of the only. Well, he's he's going to be in the Netflix show. So that's understandable why they got him in. And it's by the, I forget the actor's name, but it's the same dude that's voicing him in the show did a voice cameo here. Everyone here who's played Tomb Raider will probably already know. Yeah! By this. Wow! Yeah. There was none of that. There was none of that. He was very much like Chronicles Zip. We heard Zip and he sort of like said, I'm the guy, I'm Lara's guy in the chair and gave us a bit of a spiel. Yeah, and that was it. And that then, was fun. And then you got ushered into the next area. Yeah, that was a bit manic, that one. Yeah, but no sooner had we worked out what we had to do, we were ushered out into the next area, which was us waiting five minutes to go on the zip line. So it's like, why have you rushed us through if we're now just going to stand here and have some poor woman try and do a safety talk on a zip wire that's stuck halfway up the thing in a tree. Yeah, the pacing of the particular this particular experience was a bit off. Even with the zip wire thing beforehand when we were going into the boat section with Dakota, it took them a while for them to even open the door for us to be let in and, and get the other people out of the way. And then obviously we had the, the zip line debacle where it got caught on a piece, a piece of their own foliage. So we had to get a, wait for a man with a large stick to try and prod Quick, it back. Quick, stick. The zip line was hilarious. Yeah. Like, I am a slightly large lady with tiny little wrists. <laughs> so I was thinking, the moment I hold on to the zip line, because you're not like, sh like harnessed in or anything, you're literally using your strengths to hold it. Steve, no thought, just fucking went for it. And then like everyone else in the group was like, yeah. And I'm like, Nope. But luckily, one of the people that we were with, they were lovely and they were like, I'm not particularly fond, but I'm going to give it a go. And I fucking did it. I held on to that zip line all the way to the bottom. And then a French man with a mining helmet appeared. And um, we were, yeah. And then the next zone was even more rushed than the fucking boat zone. Yep. So like Jay, Laurie and Rosie went off. Then me, Jesse and Maya went off. And then Steve went off on his Todd. I think we got one orb. We had and like next thing you know, we're being ushered out. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. Um, We've had like less than five minutes in here. Cool. And so then Wasn't we it? went to this bit with the, with the, cargo nets and stuff um so then you had the next person asking like who we were oh, what lady we were whistle. doing lady whisper, whisper down lady whisper down and then we conveniently had to show her the relics that we had found and we hadn't found many point to mention one of us had to carry a brown backpack and then all the relics and med kits that we had to find we had to put it put in go rosie backpack. with the med kit find yes and also thanks to laurie for being pack mule for the uh duration of the experience thank you so we get to this bit and they were like, show us what you've got. And we like showed them our measly selection of relics that we'd found so that yeah. the other person can conveniently go and hide the relevant orbs that we needed to complete the experience. It was like, it was like your dad or mum like going out into the garden for an Easter egg home and then just like saying, oh, I wonder what the Easter egg bunny, uh, Easter egg bunny has left oh, us. And then just- Oh, Santa's been. Yeah, oh, exactly. And just, Santa ball. just someone just, one of the parents distracts you whilst the other one goes, ooh, and just subtly drops like, like eggs and stuff on the floor in hidden places. Hidden places, hidden in plain sight, because they wanted us and to make sure that we them. found them. And so then you were ushered into 
a cave to get to the final tomb and it wasn't it was a felted corridor with steps that you had to crawl through <laughs> oh this tunnel it was just hysterical because we couldn't see fuck all and I was having to say to, to Laurie please don't take it personally if I actually touch your bum or anything like that I don't mean anything by it I can't see where I'm going although interestingly though they said we should go towards the light good job we didn't really because one of the parts of the light was actually an escape hatch that they'd accidentally <laughs> left safety open safety exit yeah the safety also, exit. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm glad nobody farted. Oh, thank God for that. Now, we ended up in the, in the, in what I can only describe as a skull dungeon. It was a corridor. Let's, yeah, it let's was, be face it. it. It was a corridor with a pit that we had to jump into. Done. Yes. Um, so we found like the last actor who was double crossed by the bad guy. Here's the final orb that you need. Oh, how convenient. Yeah. Do you have a bed kit? Yes. We can trade it for this last fire orb that you need. And then we had to do the leap of faith, oh. which was basically, what, a 10 foot drop onto a glorified bean bag. And there are different ways that we were told that we could do this. And the, the, the obvious way is just to go Geronimo and just um, drop on your bum on the middle of this gigantic mat. And Steve just walked up to the edge and just fell off backwards because He's so cool. Yeah, you could do the whole thing where you cross your arms like that and just tip backwards. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to be first to do this. Why not? YOLO! And then I just tipped over backwards and disappeared. And then who was next after me? I think Jay and Laurie went next. And then you went after. And then I turtled. Yes, because you, you jumped and then dropped and then got stuck in the middle of the crash mat and couldn't get out of the crash mat and I had to pull you out of the crash mat by your feetsies. Then we go to the final area with the villain and then we had to do what we had to do to stop the villain. And so yeah, so we defeated the bad guy and then you go to the final area where you meet the last character and you sit on Lara's plane and he gives you a score. We are fucking iconic. We had so much fun. Like we laughed so much all the way around. Whether we did, it was because yeah. we were fucking with the actors, we didn't know what we were doing or I was just turtling myself after a leap of faith. It's not worth the £77 per person that it we is paid not, no. to do it. Not at it all. It was very much a, and this is coming from a non-Tomb Raider fan, one of my biggest gripes was there was hardly any Tomb Raider Easter eggs other than Zip showing up and our final person. Um, and of course, Lara being mentioned. That's it. It basically could be just palette swapped crystal maze and that's it. You could call it the Uncharted live experience. You yeah, that's the and thing. It's, it would it's, have been... it's, it's generic enough for it to be appealing to everybody, but also just Tomb Raider enough for it to just pass. I don't even think it was just Tomb well, you Raider had, you, you had, okay, so just um, let you know, this is a time for spoilers. Oh. We're going to talk about a couple of spoilers here because I want to talk about them. I really want to talk about them. So when we go to Finland, you get a video message from Alicia Vikander's version of Lara Croft, who sort of with provides a, a bit- With a picture of her. Yeah, with like a, a still image from the 2013 movie, well, the one based on the 2013 game. And um, it was quite nice to hear her sort of do a bit of unique dialogue. That was basically there to provide context for why Lara wasn't leading you around on this journey. She couldn't make it. No, and we were all basically, the context for us being there is we're all at Croft Manor because we are students studying with, with Lara Croft. Yeah, she's our like teacher. She's our professor, basically. And then we go through, we get go through these like um, LED strip teleportation gates to go to Finland and all these other areas. Um, and we um, we don't really we didn't really get to see her in no, person. No, because at the end, more spoilers. Lara is in the background talking to the villain who's in front of us, but like she was backlit, and it was. I at first we genuinely thought it was a mannequin. Yeah, or an animatronic. But it wasn't. It was a person, and it's like you've gone to all that trouble to like backlight her and make her silhouette look real with the person. Why the fuck didn't you bring her down to the bottom? No. And she could have interacted with the villain and us and made it that little bit more exciting. They could have played like the like the hurry music from Lara. Yeah. From, like, the original Tomb Raider. The music is only in the holding pen. No. There's no music throughout the rest of it, which I think there was they only could one bit done. of music. There was a one bit of music in the Jeep chase, and that's it. The rest of it was all the Tomb Raider suite re-recordings that Nate McCree did, so, and that was all classic music. So you could hear Venice violins. You could Time to Run was quite funny. All the T Rex, the T Rex. Yeah, I heard that the, when yeah. I went for a wee. The T Rex theme came on. Oh, we were wee. going down for a wee, and that came on. It was just like, oh god, this is the most intense urination I've ever had. Quickly get in. <laughs> that was weird as well because like they had a bar. At the actual Wait, event. Open. 
which which, which wasn't open at all. And that kind of leads into another gripe that I had and Sarah had with this particular event. It wasn't value for money because most of the stuff wasn't either there or it was broken or it wasn't working. So for one part, the bar, we wanted to go up and get some water before we started the event. And we got unceremoniously told that the taps weren't working. Okay. Fine, whatever. Um, and then at the very end, um, we all got greeted by... Nothing. Oh, that bit. I guessed who it was. I was very excited because yeah. I said, are you? So and so, they said yes. And I went, please, can I put you in the freezer? And he went, no. Winston makes an appearance at the very a end. Very and he's the only Winston. He had a grey bit of sprayed streak in his hair to make him look old. But yes, it was Winston. You get greeted by a fairly young looking Winston. He very was the best actor Winston. in the entire experience. He had a lot of banter between us, which was awesome. And he got the freezer jokes, which was really cool. And he said no, because he didn't want to be in there with Boris. No, yes, he, he had a wicked sense of humour. Oh, and then, you so you get the jet bit and then you go out and you can have your photo taken as a group on a green screen, but there was no one there to take the photo. No. So you couldn't have a photo taken. Like no, a and also- a photo. And there's also a bit where you're in this private jet being flown back to England from wherever the last boss was defeated. And you have a oh. moment to pose for a photo, oh, it which you never ever get to see. No, if it was working, you could have had the opportunity to buy that. I really do hope, but I really do hope that when people actually go through and do this themselves, if they do it themselves, that the photo machine does work. Cause we didn't have an opportunity to see the photo. Photos so or take them back some. with us, which we would have done. We so would have done, because we did genuinely have a lot of fun. Like, I know we're kind of shitting on it at the moment, but we did genuinely have fun. Jason was like, it was 80 minutes. Really? They rushed us through so much. I felt like we did it in half an hour. Yeah. I think we spent longer climbing through the cave <laughs> than we did anything else. And that leads me on to a slight segue into my other complaints with it. There was no gift shop whatsoever for this particular experience, no merchandise to buy, and no online shop to provide it and I am very disappointed at that because I would have bought everything. I ha and even had permission. I had permission, yeah. Stuff. Thanks, live experience. The whole thing just basically screams of it being opened way too quickly. You had know, you got, had when you, gone... you get like a report card and like your teacher's like, you're doing well, but you must try harder. Yeah. That is to me the experience. Like I said, if, if you can get the cheap ticket, and you can get a good group, you will have fun, you will enjoy it, but it's not Tomb raider -y enough. And this is coming from someone that my knowledge of Tomb Raider is Steve's videos and the one game I've played. You kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt and, yeah. and sort of like go in with like, this isn't going to be the best thing you'll do, but you will have fun. I wouldn't even go in with that. My attitude for anyone who's looking to do that, my advice would be to go in and just have a good time with the people that you are with. Don't expect too much from it. Don't expect anything like, like Marco Bartoli to show up or anything like that, any nods to it. The most you'll get is just some music and some cameos from some of the people who have been in the series, like voice wise. That is it. But as long as you manage and temper your expectations, you go with a good group, you're gonna have a good yeah, time. Because we did have a good time, and unfortunately, it's just overpriced for what it is. And there's no two ways about it. If it was somewhere priced at about 35 to 45 pounds, that would be perfect price range for this. But as it stands at the moment, with everything, especially if it was broken, and we paid 77 pounds per person for this, I do feel a bit cheated. Yeah, it's not as physically demanding. No. I mean, I got round in one piece and I didn't ache the day after. And as I mentioned before, I'm a rather large lady and I managed to get around. But yeah, but there is bits like if you didn't want to do the zip line or you didn't want to do the bit that's in the dark, they yeah. do have they do like you other routes. So you don't have to do it if you no. don't want to because I nearly ducked out of the zip line. Here's, here's some suggestions, I think, for me personally, um, I don't know if you can jump in whenever to add to this, of what I think would be a great way to improve the experience. Obviously, number one, fix everything and make sure it's up and running before you go. Yeah. Make sure the bar's working, make sure the photo machine is work working, make sure there was a fucking gift shop. That's the big thing. Number two. Don't give, rush us. Don't rush us, no. Give us ample time and also be better at planning everyone's time slots and journeys through the experience because it didn't feel like it was that well paced. We didn't have enough time like in the cave to figure out 
a lot of what was going on. And by the time I had figured it out, we were ushered out into the next room. Number three would be the big one for me. Let us meet Lara. We saw Lara in silhouette form at the back of the final room, looking at the bad guy. Looking down on us. Yeah, looking down. She was like up high. <laughs> but the thing is, though, she didn't move much at all. To a point we she thought she was animatronic. Like... We thought she was a robot. It was only until she actually pulled out her pistols and shot the bad guy at the end. We actually realized that's an actor. We had actors throughout all of the different rooms guiding us through. And the actors were very good. They were. I mean, they were hamming the shit out of their performances. Why, why can't we have had a Lara in the final room distracting the bad guy, having a battle with him or something like a fake battle whilst we did the fifth element shit of rearranging all the elemental crystals to then deactivate the final doomsday thing. That would have been a hell of yeah. a lot better. Because yeah. we then could have had an opportunity to see her. We Like, everyone knows that whoever's going to play Lara Croft, she's not going to be the Lara. Well, she's, no, because she's fictitious and she's a digital person. And also, they've had different versions of Lara in the games. And yeah. then they used to have the like the models that played her to promote the games. An opportunity to be able to have your photo taken with the, the Lara actress would have been great. That would have been a great yeah. opportunity to have her at the end saying, well done, team, um, as well as Winston. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Raiders. Um, um, but as it stands at the moment, those are the sort of the big things that I would focus on, making it better value for money for the player, for the players, for the customers, because at the moment it really isn't, and it kind of shows. Sorry, guys, it yeah. wasn't as positive as you might have liked us to have been. We'd like to um, be honest with these things because I feel it's important going into these that you don't feel like you've wasted your money. And we wouldn't want you to feel like you've wasted your money, especially if you're making a special Paramount trip abroad. Do. Give it some time. Um, I'm hoping that with all the feedback that people like myself, Tomb of Ash, and actual Tomb Raider fans, not influencers from TOWIE, could actually With their give the high company. heels and their mini dress. Let 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 them have a chance to get a gift shop together. Let them have a chance to maybe put the prices down. Wait for them to announce an event where like a, a sale or something like that, where their events been discounted. That's when I would suggest going. As it stands, 77, 66, and 88 is way too much for this. Way too much. And Paramount should really be doing more to make this worth our money.